Welcome back, everybody, to a satisfactory update five. I'm an old guy gaming. I'm very excited to get started with today's episode. Uh, first of all, uh, I did get a comment from one of you guys uh, reminding me that I could have set up my uh, initial power grid down below and connected everything together under a single grid. You're absolutely right. I could have done that. Um, I wasn't really thinking along those lines at the time because everything down below is super temporary uh, but you're absolutely right and now that is going to be the case uh, moving forward so from here on out everything's going to be connected to the same power grid um, at least you know on each factory platform we'll put it that way um, okay so that's out of the way now let's go ahead and uh, the the main goal for today's episode is to get our concrete production line set up but there's a couple things i want to do first and it shouldn't take us too long. So I want to go um, and I want to get the, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. I want to get the resource sink uh, set up. Um, and looks like we have everything except for just a little bit more concrete that we need to get that done. So let's make that our milestone. And uh, we'll just load everything up that it needs. And I'm going to run over and get uh, some more concrete. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Let's go ahead and pop the rest of the concrete in and get the resource sink um, or the ma'am going. Early access to the anti -waste or no, the resource sink. Testing of materials on exoplanets bonus program. Funneling parts into the awesome resource sink, depending on their amount and complexity, will grant you coupons in the awesome store, which can be exchanged for bonus rewards. Examples of bonus content are parts, walls, factory attachments, and cosmetics. Fixit is working hard to develop additional options, which will be added to the awesome store in the future. Go that extra kilometer. Go awesome. Okay, so the idea behind the awesome shop, and it's just a fantastic idea, uh, is that if you have extra surplus material, um, you can throw it in the awesome shop and uh in the awesome sink i'm sorry and what it it'll do is it'll consume it it's kind of like a big almost trash compactor but what it does though is it gives you these coupons which then you can send and uh, spend in what's called the awesome shop and then that l lets you get extra cool um, items to use in the game and so why i love this so much is because Again, uh, waste not, want not, right? So sometimes you have just extra stuff you don't need anymore. Or here's here's another example. You know, we're going to set up a big production chain. Um, well, not a big production chain. It's all relative to make these um, advanced plating that we have to send up in the Space Needle. But, you know, once we do that, um, we're going to actually need it for the next tier two. But eventually advanced plating, you know, will, will probably become something that, you know, we don't need anymore yet we are still producing it and so what we're going to do then is we're going to feed it into the awesome sink um, and get these coupons so that we can buy cool stuff from the awesome shop so that's the the idea behind it the awesome sink is also relatively big and i want to get it in place and we're going to put it over here uh, before we do anything else uh, so we have you know all that stuff set up and we're also going to get the mam going after that and the mam uh, we're going to put right next Probably what we'll do is I've got the machine shop here, uh, so we can go right out here uh, to make stuff as we need to. Uh, we might put the awesome shop here because it's a little smaller, and we'll probably put the MAM, which is our research station, right here. That's the general idea, okay? Uh, so we can uh, get the milestone selected, um, but we can't feed anything into the shop quite yet. So this is the next one we want to do. And I've got everything except for the screws. Uh, and I still have to make those by hand because I haven't set up production for those yet. But we will definitely be doing that. Okay, so let me get these screws made up here. Okay, pod's back. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to dump in everything we need for uh, field research. And that's now done. Milestone reached. The molecular analysis machine, referred to as the MAM, will allow R&D to provide new technologies, items, and buildings based on samples collected in the field. 
To ensure a greater chance of success during exploration, an upgraded tool belt has been provided, as well as an object scanner and beacons. Note, the object scanner requires calibration via the MAM to enable detection of specific objects. All right, cool. So uh, we got an extra slot uh, out of that deal. And I must have put my, this is all kind of like my temporary storage here. I must have put my uh, zapper in the storage. Did I put my zapper in the storage? Where's my zapper? Oh, yeah, down here. There we go. Okay, so we should actually keep that in our inventory at all at all times and healing stuff too. So now what we can do is we can have two things on our hand at the same time. Um, and then we just use the mouse wheel to switch between them. So very useful. Okay, cool. So yeah, that unlocked several things for us. Um, the most important, of course, being the man and the um, the awesome sink. So let's do the man first. And it looks like we have everything we need to make it. And like I said, we're just going to put it right next to our shop here, uh, but with enough room for us to walk between. Um, so, yeah, I want it to be right about here. Now, apparently the control doesn't work to line this up. Oh, actually, we can do it this way. Okay, yeah. So let's do it this way. And that should be good. Now, the MAM is the one of the primary reasons why we go out and explore, because this is where we bring stuff back um, to, you know, start researching things, which then unlocks better stuff for us, including, like, for example, the power slugs and, and those sorts of things. All right, now, we have a few things from exploration. And believe me, we're going to be doing more exploration episodes because uh, it is a part of the game. But we're going to grab what we currently have found out and about and get these in the MAM. Uh, so let's start with Katerium because Katerium has some really good stuff that we that we need. So what we're going to do is pop that in there. Um, uh, no, we have to click on it, sorry, uh, start the research. And different, you know, research takes different amounts of time. Okay, the analysis of Katerium is completed. Please choose a new node in a tree to begin a new analysis. Okay, new now... New resource added to the resource scanner. Okay, so, cool. So, um, what this new does... research is, available in the map. <laughs> okay. What this does is it allows us to um, uh, make Katerium ingots, uh, but to finish researching that, we need a little more Katerium, and we, we already grabbed that. Um... Oh, no, we need 50. We only have 27. Okay, so we're going to have to go out and get some more of that. We did find a note on uh, in Episode 1, um, and then I'm actually going to set up a little Katerium production chain specifically because, A, um, this is going to give us some really cool tools, um, including things like the zip line and the gliders, uh, the Windrunner kind of thingamadoodles. But we can also then use Katerium to manufacture items to feed into the Awesome Sink to, you know, to keep our coupons going as well. Okay, uh, but we're going to have to do another exploration because I don't have quite enough with me at the moment. All right, nutrients. Um, this allows us to uh, craft, like, you know, better health kits and that sort of thing. And so um, we can't afford either one of those because we don't have enough of them on us. So we'll have to come back and do that later. Power slug. Uh, we have enough of those. This will give us our first level of, um, New of overclocking. Unlocked. So, yeah, the, these will give us like the, the higher level ones, blue, yellow, overclock production. Let's go ahead, actually before we do that, let's go to quartz and let's research quartz because we have quartz in our inventory. Now of quartz are completed, okay. Um, that gives us quartz crystals and silica. Uh, so we can't afford that right now, and we can't afford that right now. We haven't found these other things yet, but we will. Okay, let's do alien organisms. Okay. So what this means now is that we can use uh, these alien carapace to make biomass. And you get, uh, you get a lot more biomass than you do from the plants. This also opens up the rebar gun, 
uh, which we can't afford yet until we start making rotors. Um, the expanded tool belt, so another slot in our tool belt. Spiked rebars, which is the ammunition for the rebar gun, and then a couple other things that um, you know we can't unlock quite yet. All right, now this guy, we haven't killed this guy. You know, this is another different type of alien that we have to kill to do that research. All right, I think we're good. Uh, why don't we go back to here, and this is gonna take longer. This is gonna be a five minute research, uh, but this is gonna unlock overclocking for us, which is why we, you know, w why we use the slugs in the first place. Uh, so let's get that going. It'll take five minutes, and the game will alert us when that's done. Okay, so that's the basics of the MAM, and we'll keep using that as we uh, go uh, throughout the game here. Next thing we want to do is we want to get the awesome sink set up, and uh, I want to put that over in this area. So let's go to our build menu, and the awesome sink, like I said, is pretty good size. It's a pretty good sized building, um, and so. But we want to set it up in such a way that we can feed items into it via conveyor lines or even temporarily set down um, uh, storage containers and stuff like that. So why don't we do this? Why don't we set this up? I think what I'll do is I'll just center it right on this seam here for now. And we can always, you know, we can always move it later too um, as needed. Um, actually, no, wait a second. I take that back. I take that back. We're going to do this instead. Uh, let's take this back down for a minute. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, do a mouse button click thing on that. This is going to be just kind of our general uh, box to feed stuff into the awesome sink. And I'm going to put that also on the seam here momentarily, but I want to see how far out the awesome sink will stick behind it. All right, so let's go back to Q, grab awesome sink. Whoops, sorry. All right, awesome sink. We want the input that direction. We want it right in the center of the seam, and then we're going to push push it as close to the uh, the storage container as we can until it turns red, and then we're going to just back it off by one. Okay, and then we oh. That didn't center. Um, hmm, okay. Did it center the awesome sink building itself? There's a space there. It did. All right, I think I'd rather have the awesome sink centered and have this offset just a little bit than the other way around. So let's just, whoops, sorry. Uh, let's pull this back. I keep hitting the wrong button. Slow down, OG. Okay. Let's double mouse or middle mouse click that again. And we want actually this to turn the other way too, so the input's going into the awesome sink. And then uh, looks like holding control in this case. Yeah, it's lining it up, right? Okay. So we just want it to be back to there. Okay, I think we're good. I could have actually held it a little closer. I kind of like to hold it a little closer just so it's not, because this is our roadway here, so it's not sticking out. So let's do this again. Um, all right, we should be able to do this sideways um, because the green line's gonna line it up for us. One more that way. And then we just pop a little conveyor in there and we're good to go. Okay, so anything we put in here now will just be turned into coupons in the awesome sink and we go over to here um, and this is where we'll get the coupons later on. Now we need to get power to this so what we're going to do is we're going to connect a power line. Oh, where's the power connector on this thing? Uh, right there. Okay, so, so everything is nice and straight. We're going to bring a power pole down to here. Okay, that's already got four lines connected onto it. So why don't we do this? Uh, oh, we can't put that one on directly on that seam, can we? All right. Um.
This is supposed to be our roadway here. All right, here's what I'm gonna do then. I'm gonna put a power pole here. And we're gonna have this line connect from here to here. And then that one uh, can connect from here to here. There we go, okay. Now we can run a line down this way. And I think I'm gonna put that right there. And then from there to the awesome sink. There we go, okay, so now we got power uh, set up for this. And yeah, you can put you can put almost anything in there. I think uh, things like you know your zapper, like tools, kind of thing. I don't know if you can put those in there, but any type of equipment, material, resource, uh, you can you can place in here for the awesome sink. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you know we're gonna have like some extra ore left over when I pick up the portable miners, and rather than you know try and shove that in uh, a refiner that's already probably completely full that's one place that we could do is we can just put those in the awesome sink okay so we got that done and then now I think it's time for us to uh, take a look at our concrete production line now what I want to do with this is I want the concrete itself to be uh, near near the hub um and so I just have to figure out exactly how that's going to work. Um, you know what I think I'm going to actually do is I think what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Can we get an elevator here? Um... Maybe. Maybe. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, we're falling down. Ouch! That hurt. Let's go back up. Actually, hold on. Let's look at this from down here for a minute. I think this was the spot I was looking at, right? Uh, if the new mechanic will let us clip that through... Eh, I don't know if it's going to or not. Okay, well, I still have I still have a couple of other tricks up my sleeve if we need to use them. I'm going to I'm I'm going to cut the camera here and have a bit of a thinking session and then I'll bring you guys back uh, when I when I have a plan. All right, guys, I'm bringing you back for a second. Uh, I'm still kind of having to think about how I'm going to do the concrete stuff, but I also, I want to get the logistics mark to um, going too, because this is going to give us uh, Mark II conveyor belts and lifts, uh, which is going to double our speed. So I'm going to need 30 reinforced plates and a few more iron plates uh, to make this happen. Uh, so let me get that stuff put together and we'll get this milestone going. All right, so we've gathered everything we need uh, to get the uh, logistics Mark II. So let's pop all this stuff in here and get that going <clears throat> now we are going to need to make uh the reinforced plating milestone reached improved versions of conveyor belts and conveyor lifts are now accessible to encourage additional verticality conveyor poles now have a stackable variant so we're going to need to make the reinforced plates to actually make the mark ii belts but um i'm not going to need a ton of those starting off so we'll just kind of see how things go. But yeah, we will eventually, of course, be producing those plates along with everything else. Now, I do want to look at one more thing here in terms of our milestones. Uh, part assembly is what we actually need to be working on next uh, because we're going to need an assembler in order to make those uh, reinforced plates. Um, so what do we need? We need screws and more plating. 
So let's get, let me work on that too, uh, just so we can get this out of the way and learned, and then we'll get back to the concrete. All right, guys, we are ready for um, part assembly milestone. So let's put all of the goods in here. And there we go. Milestone reached. More complex assembly of parts can now be automated. Project assembly parts can now be constructed and sent up via the space elevator. Note, project parts are too complex to produce by hand. I'm going to try and start setting up production lines to, to keep, you know, uh, uh, to obtain future milestones. And, you know, you could make an argument that I should have even set up a production line uh, for the, for the, the plates and all that before I did this. And, and I, that's not, in my opinion, that's not right or wrong. It's kind of more like a, you know, you do you and I'll do me kind of thing. But I do understand the concept behind it because after all, a big part of why we're setting up these production lines is so that we can make the goods for those milestones and for the space, um, you know, for the space elevator. But anyways, um, so yeah, I'm still kind of uh, thinking out a few more things. I'm bringing you guys back uh, when I think I have a, a good plan in mind for the concrete. All right, guys, we are back, and I have a plan, and I think we're ready to implement the plan. Uh, so let's see. First thing we're going to do is I have some extra stuff, product, um, that we're going to put in the awesome sink just to get rid of it for now. Uh, so we're going to put some limestone in there, and I got some extra ores, and I think that's all we're going to put in there. So now it's going to start taking that stuff and make coupons. Now, the way the coupons work, too, by the way, is um, they each each coupon that you get, or the points, I guess I should say, for uh, each coupon increase exponentially. Um, so, but the way that you, but what you do is the more uh, intricate items you put in there, the more expensive they are, the harder they are to make, the more points you also get for them. So something that's as basic as like limestone or iron ore is about the cheapest stuff that you can throw in there. But it is going towards points for coupons for us, so it's still worth doing. Okay, so we got that done. Uh, the other thing I want to do is let's get the rest of our uh, generators online. We have almost a full uh, thing of biofuel here. So let's grab as many stacks as we can currently carry. And we're just going to go to each biomass burner and we're going to just shift click and make sure they're all completely topped off. And the last one. Okay, so every single uh, bio generator um, is topped off with a full stack. Um, this one just consumed one log. So if we look at our power grid now, we have a total capacity of 360 megawatts, which will be, give us plenty of power uh, for quite some time. Okay, we got that out of the way. So, concrete is the name of the game. What we're going to do first is we're going to build the production line itself uh, in this area here. And then once that's in place, then we'll connect up uh, the refineries. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to leave this is I'm going to leave these two squares um, open. So this is going to be kind of like our main avenue, and we're not going to put anything in these two squares. So that means we're going to actually start on this square. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put down a splitter. And, um, whoops, I keep hitting the wrong thing there. And we're going to put the splitter in the middle of the road, quite literally, because this is our road. However, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's smack dab in the center. Oh, it's trying to line up with that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. Okay. Well, all right, you know what? Let's put that one there temporarily because now we can use it to line this one up. Okay, now we're going to stack this four high. And the last one, we want to make sure that the input is on the left-hand side where the orange arrows are. Okay, um, now uh, we don't need these any longer, so we're going to remove that and this. 
and leave that splitter up there. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on this next square. No, take the back. Next one's going to be a merger. Yeah, the next one's going to be a merger. Okay, so we're going to grab a merger, uh, and we want to make sure that, once again, it is lined up. So let's... temporarily put that one there like we did before hold down control and make sure we have our green line and we want the input to be pointing to our splitter uh, which should be right there okay now we're gonna hold down control and oh no 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 we don't want to move our remove our space elevator <laughs> press F hold control get those and that gotta be really careful with that tool all right, cool. So we've got the splitter there, um, and we're going to uh, put a conveyor line in here. We're gonna, um, oh, shoot. I think, uh, yeah, I screwed up. Okay, we can actually do it this way now because it's using the one in place with the green line. And we can tell by looking on this side that it's going the right direction. Okay, so bring it up here. Make sure the output is facing towards us. Okay, and then we're going to run a conveyor line into there. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, now we're going to uh, also do another merger in the same way that we did before. Uh, so let's press F, middle mouse button that. And once again, make sure that uh, this is pointing towards, the, uh, towards us. Hold F, hold Control, get rid of those three. So our rules, you know, for the series is not to build on the borders um, because they're going to be like access ways, but we can get around that rule by building up. So so I, I don't care if stuff is up uh, in this square as long as we can get through here and, and we have enough clearance to drive the tractor through. So that's what's going on there. Okay, so let's connect this... Um, all right, what did I do wrong this time? No, this is supposed to be a splitter. That's that's right. Okay, that's a merger, but this is supposed to be a splitter. <sighs> okay, let's do it again. <laughs> Make sure that the input's on that side. Okay, that's the what that's what we want to do. Perfect. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take another splitter. So let's hold F, middle mouse button that, and this one we're going to put. Um, we're going to put right here, I think. And we want the output to be facing away from us on this one. Okay. Uh, now we're going to press F, hold down control, get rid of those. Now we're going to attach a little conveyor belt inside of there. Okay. So we got that part taken care of. Beautiful. Now we're going to come along next and we're going to grab elevators and we're going to bring those down and point them this way okay next so all right so these these are kind of coming over a little bit into here but we still have plenty of clearance to get through with a with a tractor and whatnot so we're, we're going to let that one go all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take um, some constructors and we want the input to be facing those guys. And we're going to push them back until they bump and then we're going to pull them forward one thing. Okay, and then we're going to put one there and we're going to put one there. Sweet. Now we come along here and we put a conveyor inside of there and one inside of there and one inside of there. Beautiful. Okay. 
So that's taken care of. On this side, what we're going to do now is take and put elevators like so on all three points. Okay. Uh, now we're going to grab a splitter and we're going to put a splitter right on the end of this, making sure that the output is correct. Okay, that's right. And then we're going to grab a merger. And we're going to put a merger here with the output facing that direction. And we're going to put another merger here with the output facing this direction. All right, now let's get all those hooked up with conveyor belts, taking advantage of this wonderful, um, this wonderful, you know, being able to build stuff close together, which I still haven't figured out what they're calling that, <laughs> clipping. I, I guess, yeah, I guess that's what it's called, it's just clipping. Okay, cool, so we got those three set up. We're gonna put two more constructors in, and I'll explain why we're doing a total of, of five um, in just a little while, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take another splitter and we're going to put that splitter right here, but we're gonna put the output on this side. Okay, and we're gonna build that up like so. Press F, hold control, get rid of those. And we're gonna do another merger and we're gonna do the same thing here. All right, with, and we want to make sure though that this time that the uh, output is facing this direction. So we'll output this direction. Excellent. And then once again, uh, another merger here with the output this time facing to the right. like so okay now we're going to conveyor belt these two together we're going to conveyor belt you to you and you to you there we go beautiful all right next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab another elevator put that here flip it around this way and same thing here just like so Okay, we're gonna grab two more constructors. Now, this, these constructors are gonna be turned the opposite direction. So, uh, we want the input, um, uh, I'm, uh, wait a second. Yeah, the input has to be on this side, right, okay. All right, and then we're gonna line this up and we're gonna push it forward till it touches and then we're gonna pull it back one thing, do the same thing here, like so. Pop a little conveyor in there, and a little conveyor in there. Beautiful. Okay, we're almost almost there, guys. I'm gonna do this here, and we're gonna do this here, like so. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, put another splitter uh, on the end of this. And we want the input to be on that side. And we want to put a, another splitter here with the input on this side. Okay, we're going to do a little loop-de-loop -loop there and it's going to be nice and perfect 90 degrees. And then we're going to run a belt from here to here. Also nice and straight. It is slant. It is coming down at an angle, but it's you know straight laterally speaking. A nice beautiful 90 degree angle there. Fan friggin' task. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna temporarily put this here. I'm not gonna leave that there, but we're just gonna put it there to kind of use as a guide. And we're gonna get ourselves a storage box, and we're gonna turn that storage box so that the input's facing us. 
We're going to move it forward until it bumps into that. And then we're going to pull it back four. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. Okay. And then we're going to take, uh, we can take that away. Now, we want to stack these up four high alternating so that the input is on this side all the way at the top. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up. We're going to turn this this way. Now the way this works is you want to make sure that the green line is right at the bottom of where you're trying to connect it so it lines up. If you get it higher than the bottom then you won't have... Oh, you know what? Actually I screwed it up. I, I made it too high. Let's try this again. So go there and there. Yeah, I, I was looking at the wrong thing. And now we have a nice straight conveyor belt going into the top. We're going to then uh, put a conveyor belt here, down into here. We're going to put one here, down into here, one here, down into here. So what that's going to do, if it isn't already obvious, is the output's going to start up here and then it's going to just zigzag down here and this is where it will accumulate. And then as it starts to fill up, it'll fill up from the top down. And that means when we need to come and get concrete, we can grab it out of the bottom. We don't have to climb up and get it out of the top one if we get it the other way around. The other thing that's nice about all this setup is we have a nice clearance here that we can easily walk through or get through later on with the factory cart. Uh, the tractor probably fits under there too, actually. But, um, you know, we, we just keep everything off the floor. So we have lots of clearance and movement to get through here. All right, let's go to this uh, constructor, and we're going to tell it to do concrete, um, and we're going to copy the settings here, okay? And all we have to do is go into each constructor, press Control-V, Control-V, and copy it in. The Control-V, I noticed, though, kind of takes a little while. You have to hold it for a second or two for it to take, which is a little bit odd, and it's... Um, but it's still a little faster than having to, um, you know, well, I don't know. It's our, in this case, it probably doesn't matter. Um, but you know, you may have s m uh, overclock settings or other specific settings that are a little more involved. Uh, but if you just do a quick control V, yeah, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Anyways, nevertheless, we've set all of these up now to make concrete for us. Okay. So that's done. Uh, now, the next thing we want to do is we're, we need to get uh, our power hooked up here. Uh, so what we're going to do is, do we have room on this line here? Whoops, wrong button. Let's try this again. Yeah, we have, we have one extra power line there. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to take and run that power line. Um, I kind of don't, well, kind of don't want it in the middle here so much. Just trying to think here. Yeah, let's do this. Let's put, um, whoops, keep grabbing the wrong doggone thing. Let's put a power line here, right in the center of that. Okay, and then if we run one over to here. Oh, this is great. It's going to let me put it in there, even though it's, you know, clipping a little bit. So it's right on the seam. Now, um, and this looks fine, too, uh, you know, visually, because the wire, the cable is still clearing everything. Uh, at least, yeah, it should even, you know, with the animation. Okay, cool. So let's grab another one of those, and we'll once again put it in here. And we could... Do, 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 do. We could also run one here, except for this is maxed now. Well, okay, one way to fix that issue is to put another power pole here. Okay, and then delete that. Run a line from here to here, delete this, 
and run a line from here to uh, to there. Okay. There. Now what we can do is we can run a power pole over on this side. Um, probably right to here. And then let's once again put one in there and one in here. Now, I don't I, I don't need this many poles, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the cabling look neat. Uh, and the poles are cheap anyways. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay, so let's connect the power to there. Connect the power to there. Connect the power to there. Connect that one to there. And we this one we can go, uh, you know, get both of those from there. So that that's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay, so everything's powered up. Uh, recipes are set. And I think we're good to go up here. So now what we have to do is we have to hook up our um, our connections to the ore. So we have a, a limestone node just right over the hill there, even closer, in fact, than the one that's over there. Uh, so let's work with that one first. I'm going to uh, get rid of some of this foliage um, just because, so we can see better. So let me do that right now. <laughs> 